jangan lupa klik subscribe dan tekan tombol bell untuk mendapatkan video-video terbaru dari channel kami. Your life is an expression of your programs because 95% of your life comes from the subconscious. What would happen if your subconscious programs matched the wishes, desires, and aspirations you hold in your conscious mind? Twice a day, your brain is prepared to download information, and this is where you can reprogram your subconscious mind. The conscious mind being creative can learn from reading a self-help book, going to a lecture, watching a movie. The conscious mind can learn from something as simple as, aha, I just figured it out. So the conscious creative mind has many different ways of downloading information. But the two minds are not connected in the sense that if the conscious mind learns something, does it mean that the subconscious mind has learned this as well? And the answer is absolutely not. The conscious mind learns through its creative processes, but the subconscious mind learns primarily in two ways. And I say, so what's different? I say, conscious mind, read a book, watch a movie, hear a lecture, it's downloaded, it already knows. Subconscious mind doesn't learn that way. The subconscious mind is a habit mind. Well, there's two ways to get programs into that subconscious mind. Number one was the way we downloaded information into the subconscious mind in the first six or seven years of life, and that is this. The subconscious mind is operating at a vibrational frequency of theta, which is hypnosis. So it says, oh, yes, you can download information straight into the subconscious if your mind is in a state of hypnosis. So that's one way of acquiring a program. I said, well, the first six or seven years, that brain of a child is predominantly operating in theta hypnosis. But now you're older. Now what do you do? I go, well, here's an interesting fact. Twice a day, your brain goes through a period of theta vibrational activity. Twice a day, your brain is prepared to download information through hypnosis. I say, well, when does that occur? Well, remember, there are vibrational frequencies that ramp up. When you're sleeping, you're at the lowest vibrational frequency called delta. As you start to wake up, but you're not fully awake, that's twilight reverie, that's where you're just waking up and everything, you're still in a dream world, you're in the real world, you're mixing the two, that's a period called theta. So you go from dead sleep delta, as you begin to wake, the vibrations start to go up and you're in theta. So there's a period of theta where hypnosis is, can occur. But as you get more awake, theta gets to a higher vibration. Alpha, that's calm consciousness, you're just waking up, you're doing your routine chores of getting ready to leave the house. And by the time you're getting ready to go to work or at work, your brain ramps from alpha calm conscious to beta, which is the active consciousness that we usually engage in the busy world in which we live. Well, then you come back home. Well, you've been operating in beta at work, and guess what? You come home, you start to calm down, your brain slips into the lower vibrational frequency, alpha, calm consciousness. And as you start to get ready to go to bed, guess what? From alpha, it drops down to theta as you start to fall off to go to sleep. And when you finally are in sleep, you go from theta to delta. So that means as you're going to sleep, as you're going from the alert state to the sleep state, you also pass through theta. So twice a day, your brain is engaged in theta. On the way in waking up, going from delta to higher vibrations, you pass through theta. On the way of going to sleep, you go from higher vibrations to delta, and again, pass through theta. So twice a day, your brain is in a state where it is in a state of hypnosis theta. And this is where you can use subliminal tapes to reprogram your subconscious mind. As you go to bed, if you put earphones on, with uh, subconscious programming to change whatever behaviors you want to change. As you're going to bed, those earphones on your head, as you go into theta, your alpha consciousness is now disappearing. You're in theta, and in that period of theta, which is twilight reverie, the recording of the tape is being downloaded straight into the subconscious, and that's how subliminal tapes work. So if you want to change a program, you can select a tape that will have the program that you desire to put into your mind. And every night as you go to bed, just put the earphones on and you will be in a process of self-hypnosis. Hypnosis is indeed the first way the subconscious mind learns. 
But after you pass six or seven years of age, the subconscious mind learns in a different way, and that is called habituation. Meaning, if you repeat something and repeat it and repeat it, the subconscious mind will download it and make it a habit. So for example, you wanted to uh, learn the ABCs. How did you learn the ABCs? You started A, B, C, D, E, and then you couldn't remember, and then you start A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and you repeat it, and you repeat it, and finally you get the Z. And guess what? After repeating the alphabet hundreds of times, there's a point where now it's part of the subconscious. So guess what? It's now downloaded in your mind. If I ask you to give me the sequence of the alphabet, you can simply rattle off unconsciously A through Z without even thinking about it. Why? You created a habit that downloaded the alphabet. So, after you're six or seven, and you want to change programming in your life, a way of doing it is the conventional way, is creating a habit, repeating something on almost a religious level. Let me just make it clear. A sticky note on the refrigerator is not a habit. A sticky note on the refrigerator is more or less a wish. Every time you look at it, I wish that would be true, but that's not a habit. A habit means you have to do something and repeat it and repeat it and repeat it. That's the way you learn uh, everything after you're seven, and that's how you learn how to drive a car, uh, for example, or the work that you do or whatever activities you get involved with when you repeat them, they become habits in the subconscious mind. But now comes a very important issue. What are the programs you have to change in your subconscious mind? Especially important is the fact that most of these programs were introduced into you even during the last stage of, of pregnancy, the last trimester, in the first six or seven years of your life. So I say to you, well, tell me about the programs that you learned when you were one year old. Tell me about the programs you learned when you were two years old. And you go, oh, I don't know, I wasn't consciously aware of those things. I go, yeah, because consciousness started more around six or so. So I say, well, how do you know then the programs that you have? Here's the fun part of the whole thing. Science has revealed that we operate our lives 5% of the time from the conscious mind and 95% of the time our behaviors are controlled by the programs in the subconscious mind. What does it mean? It's simple. Your life is essentially a printout of your subconscious programs. That's what you're operating 95% of the time. So you want to know what the programs are? It's very simple. Look at your life. The things that work for you and that come to you and the things that you want come to you because you have programs in the subconscious that encourage their being there. But anything you struggle with, anything you have to work hard at, anything you put an effort into, you're doing that because you're trying to overcome a program of limitation that is preventing you from going there. So all you have to do is look at your life and say, hey, what works for me works because I already have programs to support that. What I'm struggling with in life I'm having a problem with because I have subconscious programs that do not encourage that behavior. So right away you automatically know what behaviors do you want to change? They're the ones that you have difficulty with. Okay, how do you change them? Well, you can use self-hypnosis, the subliminal tapes. You could change them by creating new behavioral habits that you repeat every day religiously, changing the old behavior and rewriting it live every time, saying, no, don't do it that way. No, don't do it that way. Talking to yourself and saying, that's not what I want. This is what I want. And you constantly repeat this to yourself. Guess what? Habit will inevitably change that program and put it into the new program. So now we're down to a very fundamental understanding of life. And that fundamental understanding of life is this. Your life is an expression of your programs because 95% of your life comes from the subconscious. That if you want to change your life, you could do either of two things. Stay in the conscious mind, be mindful, or two, rewrite the programs in your subconscious mind. Think about this. How many of us talk to ourselves and say, Oh, come on, Bruce, don't do that. That's such a stupid thing. And I'm talking to myself to try to change a behavior. And it's very frustrating because the more I talk at myself, the less the behavior is changing. And the more I talk, the more angry I get with myself because my, I'm not listening to my own suggestions. And then I ask people to stop for a moment. I say, you're talking to yourself. Who are you talking to? And you say, well, I'm talking to my subconscious mind. I go, well, there's the problem. The subconscious mind is like a tape recorder. There's nobody in there. So all of that effort to try to change the subconscious mind by talking to it is a waste of time for a very simple reason. There's nobody in there to respond 
to your new wishes and your new desires. You actually have to engage hypnosis, habituation. What is the consequence of rewriting it? And simple answer is this. What would be the consequence if your subconscious programs matched the wishes, desires, and aspirations you hold in your conscious mind? Thank God we can reprogram the subconscious mind.